going to be accountable okay, for that. But there is nothing legitimate about radicalising Richard Dart, who plotted to bomb Wooden Bassett. How many jihadists no, no, have you? No, how many jihadists wrong. have you're you influenced? How Richard many Dart, people Richard have they Dart killed? was in prison for nine or ten months. He faced he faced the choice between having about twenty years in prison or taking a plea bargain. He in he, court, he, in court, he made a couple of phone court, calls. He typed a few things on a computer. Wait, okay, okay, wait. The in fact court, that he was forced to plead okay, guilty doesn't court, mean that he was planning anything no, at all. No, in court you radicalised him. It was said in court you radicalised Richard Dart. Please, please. How many jihadists you know what, would you for, say for the you British government? For the British government. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are going to be checking out another video uh, from Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray on Channel 4 News. Wow. I believe this is going to be very uh, educative. So let's check it out. Go. Well, I'm joined now by the radical cleric Anjem Chowdhury, one of the founders of the controversial Islamist organisation Al Muhajirun, and by Julie Siddiqui from the Islamic Society of Britain. Also joining us from Amsterdam is Douglas Murray from the Henry Jackson Society. And before we talk to all of them, we've unearthed footage tonight which shows one of the alleged terrorists, Michael Ada Bellagio, at a protest by the now banned group Al Muhajirun in 2007 outside Paddington Green Police Station in London. And Jim Chowdhury was also on the march. So, one of the suspects attended your marches, listened to your lectures. You therefore helped radicalise him. Will you apologise for what's happened down in Woolwich? I'm not going to apologise for exposing the crimes of the British government in no, Iraq or that's Afghanistan. That's not the question I asked. Yeah, well, you helped radicalise Well, let me answer the suspect. question in my way. Radicalisation is a stick which is used to beat the Muslim community. The fact is that there is conflation between exposing the British uh, foreign policy, between things like rendition, Guantanamo Bay, uh, killing innocent men, women and children, which I have no apology for whatsoever. But and you we will continue, we will continue to expose... You helped radicalise well, the suspect and now a British no soldier is dead to, without on Without to allow me street. to answer the question you the way that I want. Well, well, the question I'm asking is, well, you well, helped well, radicalise well, him let me just tell you something. because you were there with him on these marches. Will you apologise? Radicalisation is calling for the Sharia nowadays. Radicalization is exposing the British government. Radicalization is commanding good forbidding evil. We say, and we've always said, that we live here under a covenant of security. It's not allowed to target innocent people right. in return for our life and wealth being secure. And we've said that over the years. Radicalization but the fact is, is, the, fact is the biggest radical, radicalizing yes. factor is the British government okay, and the foreign policy. But radicalization is also about justifying violence, isn't it? No, it's not. Will you no, take some responsibility for what the, the has happened is, on the, the streets is, of Woolwich? The thing like radicalization, fundamentalism, extremism, extremism is used by the British government to silence a section of the community which exposed their own policies. There's something called Islam. Islam calls for the Sharia. Islam says that people have a right to defend themselves. And we, that's okay. what we propagate. We don't propagate something outside of Islam. Douglas Murray, how should the government uh, respond to the kind of things that Anjum Chowdhury is saying there? Well, it's very difficult in a way for the government because al Harun and its offshoots have already been banned. Uh, its offshoots have been banned for many years. And this group, of course, and its activities predate 9-11. I mean, I think it's very important to remember that uh, Amer Mirza was convicted, first a member of al Mujahirun, was convicted in 1998 for his attempt to firebomb a British army barracks. Uh, there have been a spate of attacks. Um, we've worked out that about 20% actually of convictions, uh, of al-Qaeda-related terror convictions in this country, have a linkage with al Mujahirun and with Mr Chowdhury. OK, Douglas, uh, let me put that point direct to Anjum Chowdhury. I mean, that's quite an astonishing figure. I mean, you take some responsibility for that, don't you? No, not at all. I, I think that you need to make a distinction between legitimate legitimate political and ideological struggle, which we have been doing for about 15 or 20 years in this country. You know, I've never been arrested. I've never been arrested for organising any terrorist activities, any kind of military bases or anything like that. And the, the reality is that people we come across, we, we have a huge number of demonstrations and processions and activities, and of course we come across many people. People may leave okay. our own activities and do things okay. you know, okay. outside of that, but, and we're not going to be accountable okay. for that. But there is nothing legitimate about radicalising Richard Dart, who plotted to bomb Wooden Bassett. How many jihadists no, no, have you you, how many jihadists wrong. have you're you influenced? Wrong. Richard, how many Dart, people Richard have they Dart killed? was in prison for nine or ten months. He faced he faced the choice between having about twenty years in prison or taking a plea bargain. He in he, court, he, in court, he made a couple of phone court, calls. He typed a few things said, on a computer. Wait, okay, okay, wait. The in fact court, that he was forced to plead guilty okay, doesn't court, mean that he was planning anything no, at all. In court, you radicalised him. It was said in court that you radicalised Richard please, Dart. Please, please. How many jihadists you know would you for, say for the you radicalised? For the British government and their own media wing, radicalisation is calling for the Sharia. Radicalisation 
Vatican is exposing their murderers in Muslim countries. The Vaticanization okay. is saying that Can we want the it? Sharia. The fact is that, you know, these kind of terms are used to demonize the Muslims okay. and to justify your foreign policy. Okay, Julie Sadiq, let me bring you in. What's your response to what you've heard there? Well, I just want to first of all give my um, condolences and thoughts to the family, friends and the people of Woolwich, really, the family and friends of Lee Rigby, of course, today we're seeing the, uh, you know, face to a name, really, and it makes it even more horrific and very, very sad what we saw in our streets unfolding yesterday. You know, I think really we, all of us, any decent people in this country, will realise that this kind of uh, rhetoric has no place whatsoever in this country. You know, what we saw yesterday and what we're seeing with uh, the likes of the English Defence League, you know, for me, in both ends, they are trying to divide this country in a way that we won't stand for. You know, the good hundreds and thousands of good people in this country, you know, al Mahadroon and any of his offshoots have always only ever had tens of people, not hundreds, not thousands. You know, so really representing a very, very small number of people in this country. And you mentioned the EDL there. I mean, there have been uh, some mosques targeted by the far right. Do you think Muslims, mainstream Muslims, are fearful today? I mean, I think Muslims do feel vulnerable today. Um, and, you know, some mosques were attacked yesterday and we're hearing all sorts of other stories coming through. And, of course, we have to all remain calm and measured uh, to make sure that these things don't escalate any further because that's obviously something that we... we uh, don't want to see in this country either. So I think Muslims do feel vulnerable today. But I think the overwhelming majority of Muslim organisations and individuals have come out in full force today to absolutely condemn and say that this kind of action has no place whatsoever in this country. Douglas Murray, uh, David just, Cameron uh, said that these attacks will bring people together. Are we not terror-struck as a country? No, I don't think so at all. I'm not terror-struck. You're not terror-struck. Almost none of the British nation, I should think, is terror-struck. What we are is united in disgust, Muslims and non-Muslims. You know, it's, it's extraordinary, really, for most of us, because we've all witnessed Mr Chowdhury and his group for many years trying to provoke the British people. Uh, he's got on his record not only uh, the huge swathes of people that he has helped to radicalise, but, of course, he's also created the English Defence League, an incredible double whammy achievement for one individual. But, you know, one of the things that's most interesting in this is the continual provocation of Mr Chowdhury does not persuade and will not persuade most of us to believe that most Muslims are like Mr Chowdhury. They are not. Most Muslims in this country are utterly disgusted by him and his actions. And the important thing to remember for non-Muslims is not to be provoked by Mr Chowdhury, not even when he says, as he did earlier this year, that his £25,000 a year that he gets in benefits from the British state is what he calls jihad seekers allowance. If I may make one point, okay, okay. Mr Chowdhury was almost certainly better paid than Drangma Rigby. That fact is something that we should mull on and I would suggest yeah. sort out okay. swiftly. Uh, uh, Anjum Chowdhury, I mean, so these suspects viewed the soldiers, soldiers generally, as legitimate targets. Do you? Well, let me just say, first of all, that Douglas Murray... No, Doug, Doug, no, no, wait a second, wait a second. Douglas Murray time. is talking rubbish. I'm not getting 25k okay, a year. We'll I'm not on aside. JSA for your information. Leave Check your facts. Yeah, we'll and she's wrong as well. We don't have suspects. 10 or 100 members. Okay, we have many. Right. But the point these is, suspects, soldiers, you... soldiers who are fighting in Afghanistan, obviously the people have a right to defend themselves. What we say in Britain is that we have a covenant of security. In return for our life and wealth being protected, it is not allowed for Muslims to target the life and the wealth of the people with whom we live. But I'll tell you something. Okay. The people, the people who are oppressing the Muslims is the British government. The people who are banning okay. ideological and political struggle are the British government. Okay. They don't Andrew, allow people to express Andrew Chowdhury, themselves. You've had, you've had your people time. You've had your say. Thank you very much. We have to move on now. Wow. What an interesting uh, debate just by uh, the title Douglas Murray on Channel 4 News. Wow. You can tell Douglas, uh, I, for one, I love listening to uh, Douglas Murray because I feel and I believe uh, Douglas Murray is a very articulated person. He's someone that is very honest, uh, someone that is very sincere. He's not afraid to say the truth. He always uh, stands for the truth. And from the Muslim scholar point of view, uh, from what he's saying that uh, the British government are the one uh, oppressing uh, the Muslim, that they are the one oppressing the Muslim, that they try to uh, associate all sort of words to the Muslim by saying uh, they are being radical, by saying they are, they are extremists, by saying all sort of things that the British government are, try, are not uh, giving the Muslim community to be able to express themselves. 
that when they even try to express themselves, uh, they try to say that uh, they are becoming they are becoming radical. They try to uh, classify them as uh, Islamic uh, extremists, Islamist fundamentalists, all because they are trying to uh, express their rights. And I, for one, I believe everyone has their own uh, freedom of speech. Everyone has their own freedom of uh, freedom of expression. So I don't know how true that is. Since he's saying uh, the British government uh, uh, is trying to uh, uh, take away uh, the freedom of, of the Muslim people, that whenever they try to express themselves, they, 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 uh, they try to say uh, they are becoming terrorists or they are associated with terrorists or they are fundamentalists or they are, they are Islamist extremism just because uh, they are trying to express themselves. And I love uh, the question that uh, the lady interviewed him, I love the question he he, he asked. Uh, I love the question she asked him at the beginning of the video. Uh, is is he going to apologize uh, to the British, to the public, uh, for uh, contributing to radicalizing? Uh, 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 I don't. I can't really remember the name of the person for contributing to radicalize the terrorists. Is he going to take uh, some blame for that? And from his point of view. He never answered that question. He never answered that question, but instead he tried to, uh, you know, uh, uh, beat around the question by saying, uh, they, 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 that they tried to, that by saying, uh, uh, the British government always try to condemn the Muslim, whatever they, uh, they, they do. The British government always tend to condemn them that they are, they are, they are being radical. Even when they try to express their freedom, the British government always condemn them that they are being radical. I, for one, I believe uh, British as a nation, British UK as a country, has its own identity. It's embodied uh, in the country's culture, it's embodied in the country's tradition, it's embodied in the country value. And I believe for you to uh, come to uh, UK or uh, decide to live in British, first thing you have to do is to accept uh, the people's culture is to accept the people's tradition, is to accept the people's value. You don't have to impose your own culture. You don't have to impose your own tradition on the people because you have to be able to uh, adjust yourself to accommodate the uh, British culture, to accommodate British tradition. And I know Douglas Murray always uh, always debate about Islamic extremism, Islamists are uh, fundamentalists, and he always say, you live in, uh, in, uh, in a community, in a uh, society, you have no right not to be offended. You don't have to pick offense because people are trying to express uh, their freedom of speech. You don't have to pick offense. And I, for one, I believe the clash of different ideas uh, uh, always bring solution to a lot of, a lot of, a lot of problems. So I believe uh, you don't have to impose your own culture on the British people. You don't have to impose your own tradition on the British people. If you want to uh, be a British, you have to accept uh, their uh, their identity by accepting their values, by accepting their culture, by accepting their tradition. Then you don't have to try to impose your own culture, your own tradition on the people. And when they try to uh, when they try to address the issue. You claim they are they are trying to condemn. You claim they are trying to condemn the Muslims. You claim you you you, you claim that they are trying to uh, uh say the Muslims are being radical. That's just what I'm seeing uh, in this debate. And if you feel you cannot accommodate uh, the British culture, you cannot accommodate the British tradition, you cannot accommodate the British value system. I think it's better you go live in a Muslim country where I believe uh. Uh, no one is going to question your action because it's a Muslim country. Uh, British as a nation, uh, they have their own identity. And if you want to live, uh, 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 if you want to live without having a problem, you have to accept the people culture, the people tradition, the people law, the people value system in order for you to uh, stay out of problem. So I've learned a lot from this uh, debate. I've learned a lot just listening to the Muslim scholar. Listening to Douglas Murray, I've really learned a lot. So I also like to hear your comments on this topic they are trying to address. Don't forget, keep the conversation rolling. 
kindly click on the subscribe button click on the like button you have a nice day yeah, yeah.